we have this metaphor to explore the issue of the success of the organ of organizations and we call it the three bakers analogy so let's assume we have these three bakers who collaborate to bake a cake it takes them an entire month to bake the cake and at the end of the month they sell the cake and after they sold the cake each baker takes a slice home to feed their family and clearly once they've done that there's a slice left and you would call that slice a surplus or a profit if you're a capitalist but the point about this is that you you measure the success of the enterprise based on the size of that slice of that surplus slice now what that suggests therefore is that for that slice to exist this in the, these three bakers worked together in such a way that the total product that they baked was bigger than what each individual took home in other words collectively they gave more than what they took so the success of an enterprise is really based on the intent of the individual to give more than what they take in pursuit of the organization's objectives. The most important reason for people to be willing to go the extra mile or give more than what they take is really how the group is led. People go the extra mile for people. And this is in a sense where we find one's first significant problem because you know, uh, it's really very interesting how most people in leadership positions see the word leadership. If you were to ask, you know, an average leader or a group of leaders to describe what this word means or to define the word, then what you see here is a, is a reasonably typical list of things. People would say things like um, and leaders, the, the, the example that you set to fellow employees in your team, the ability to influence, the ability to serve, the ability to influence people to achieve goals voluntarily, the influence of the team to achieve a common goal to pull in the same direction, empowering people to be better than you, the ability to manage conflict, somebody who has been where you want to take them and where people will do things willingly, um, be inspirational and motivational to your team for them to reach their full potential, the ability to promote the planning, leading and controlling and organizing of the team you're assigned to, to give proper direction, coaching and mentoring to, other, to, for, to, to others to succeed. Um, uh, now, what's interesting about these definitions, and these are all definitions that were solicited from a group of people sitting in the same sort of virtual room, is that you can, there's fundamentally, there's two categories in this material. There's a category that has to do with people. Um, you know, set the example you said, your fellow employees, for instance, influence people, we've indicated there, empowering people. So there's this one category, which is about people. And then there's another category, which is about an outcome or a result. Um, so inf as soon as you say the ability to influence, it suggests a direction. Um, if you say achieve goals, this is a direction. Common goal is a direction. In fact, some people say the same direction. These are all about outcomes and results, which means if you put this information through a still and you were to uh, produce a single sentence out of this information, that single sentence would lead something like leadership is about achieving a result through people. Now, most leaders have this view and the problem with this view is that it's deeply toxic. And a simple thought experiment suffices to make the case. Let's assume um, we try and understand the difference between a, bo a, a, a person who's going to work for a boss because they have to and a person who's going to work for a boss because they want to. So we assume you're the boss, you've got two people working for you, we're going to call one person Fred and the other person Joe. And uh, in the Fred case, if you, you say to Fred, Fred, in 2010 rather, I did what you have to do now and what I did worked. Let me go and do what I did. You say to Joe, Joe, in, in 2010, uh, I did what you have to do now and what I did worked. Uh, it might be helpful to take a look at it. Now, the question is, well, what makes these two interactions different? And it appears that in the Joe case, you're being a lot more, in a sense, democratic. Um, the Fred case, you're being a little bit authoritarian and sort of command and control. Uh, and clearly, if you you know, if you the question is, who's going to work for you because they have to and who's going to work for you because they want to? Fred's going to work because he has to and Joe's going to work because he wants to. I'd like to suggest that the reason for that difference isn't just that you're, in a sense, being more democratic with, with, with Joe than you are being with Fred. There's quite a deep difference here, which has to do with how means and ends pattern in the, in, in the, in the sentences. Because if you consider these two categories, means and ends, and you put into those two categories either the person who's doing the job or the job that's being done, 
and we examine the Fred interaction. If you said to Fred, Fred, in, in 2010, I did what you have to do now and what I did worked. Go and, uh, go and do what I did. Then basically your end is to get the job done and you're using Fred, the person, as your means to get the job done. Fred is your resource. Your aim is to get a result or to achieve, uh, to get a job done. If we examine the Joe interaction and we assume that your intent in the Joe interaction is, is absolutely sincere. I mean, you, you, you mean what you say. Uh, if you said to Joe, Joe, in 2010, I did what you have to do now and what I did worked, and, uh, it might be helpful to take a, take a look at it. You could have a completely different outcome from what you had in 2010. In fact, it might even be a disaster. Which means in this instance, you're, you, you, in, your intent is not to get a job done. Your intent is actually to teach Joe the person something. And you're using the job that is doing as the opportunity to teach him to do something. Uh, now, this inversion of means and ends is really quite significant because it suggests that in the Fred case, you're using Fred the person as the means to get the job done. And in the Joe case, you're using the job as an opportunity to teach him something. That inversion of means and ends says that there's a fundamental shift in your intent as the boss. Because if we ask Fred, you know, Fred, who's the beneficiary of this interaction with your boss? He's going to say the boss. The boss is trying to get something out of me. He's taking from me. If you ask Joe the same question, you know, who's the beneficiary of this interaction with your boss, uh, you or the boss, you say, no, it's me. The boss is trying to give me something. Now, clearly, if we define the, the job of the leader through this lens, if we say leadership is about achieving a result through people, then we're talking about the Fred interaction and not the Joe interaction. And what's very important is that if we say that the organization succeeds based on the degree to which the average person gives more than what they take in pursuit of the group's objectives, work because they want to rather than because they have to, then we have to understand that this statement is therefore deeply toxic. Um, that statement is about taking. Now, we need to do something quite dramatic for, to that statement, to have that statement be consistent with the Joe interaction. We need to invert means and ends in the statement. That statement needs to say something like leadership is about achieving people through results. Now, that's not as nutty as it sounds because that's exactly what a coach does. A coach's job is not to achieve a result. That's what players do. A coach's job is to coach the player. Now, that doesn't suggest that the coach has got no interest in the game that's being played and he's got no interest in the result because you can't coach a game if you don't know what's happening on the field and you can't coach a game if you don't know what's happening on the scoreboard. But that doesn't the, the, your, your sort of principal concern as a coach. Your concern is the competence and the commitment of the player. You will use what's happening on the field and on the scoreboard as your means to instruct the player. In other words, the coach doesn't use the player to get a, to get a job done and to achieve a result uses the result as his means to enable the player. That suggests, therefore, that leadership is not about achieving a result through people. It's actually the other way around. Leadership is about achieving people through results. Mm -hmm.